All right, let's get into some of the weightier issues of JavaScript here. Um, now that you kind of know about the first class functions and why code looks the way it does, event-driven environment, these are all kind of things that are created because of the event-driven environment. And so let's go ahead and look into uh, what closures are in this video. This is a very misunderstood and, and oftentimes perceived as very complex thing to JavaScript that really isn't that complex of an idea if you, if you think about it from the right perspective. Um, let's look at it from an event-driven environment perspective. So um, here we go on document ready function we want to alert a. I'm going to go var a equals 1. So this function runs when the document is ready, sets up this listener, and this is going to be the only guy running when the button is clicked. The problem is, is this function already ran, created a, and it's done. The function is finished, but we don't want a to disappear because this function has to access it in order to alert it. JavaScript notices this. It notices that there's what's called a reference to something that is in a different scope. Um, and so it keeps uh, it keeps this variable a alive. Uh, the textbook definition of a closure is something that retains state and scope after it executes. So after this function executes, it's going to remember the state, i.e. it's going to remember that variable A exists and that variable A equals 1. Um, and scope, which we'll get into in the next one because that's a video all on its own. But it's going to remember that this exists. So anytime later on, this function that references A has access to it. Um, and so let's go ahead and see if this works here. I'm going to go ahead and save. Every time I click, it, it's able to alert 1. And it's also able to modify it. I can go a plus plus, which if you're new is a fancy way of saying a equals a plus one. Um, so now it should alert two. Yep. So now a exists. It's been modified. A now equals two. If I click it again, it's going to change a to three and it's going to alert it again. So this a is in a closure. This whole function ran. Uh, but then all the variables of the function are saved off in memory land, um, and they're accessible by this guy as long as I exist. So as long as this event listener for button exists, A is stored in JavaScript memory. It's a closure that JavaScript will not let go of as long as there is a reference to A. So this is also where the uh, JavaScript is really good at taking care of memory and the garbage collection, cleaning it up. But this is kind of your first introduction to what a memory leak is. A memory leak is when you have maybe, say, a lot of variables in memory that you don't need anymore. Uh, let's say this button is gone. We don't need this button to click event to happen anymore. Uh, then we're actually going to want to go button off click that's going to unbind it that listener is gone there's no more no longer a reference uh, this function is gone it's removed there's no longer a reference to a and so JavaScript will garbage collect this entire function this whole area here all the variables everything can now get trashed the memory can be freed up because JavaScript is smart enough to know that it's not necessary anymore there's no more code listening to it it can be garbage collected. Um, and unless you do that, I mean, it's really not a big deal in most applications unless you get to really huge JavaScript applications. Uh, because honestly, remembering that A equals 1 is nothing. Uh, you can do that a thousand times over. And Chrome does not care. Your browser is not going to get bogged down uh, by a thousand tiny little variables. Um, but that is what it means. That's what a closure is. A function ran. Uh, the function executed, it's done executing, it's not ever going to execute again, um, and then it's going to remember that there are references to certain variables, so it will keep those variables alive in a memory place that is called a closure. If that makes sense, that's what a closure is, and let's get on now to scope and context.